<laughs> How, howdy, y'all. My name's Simon, and I'm the director of photography here at Random Golf Club. Today's gonna be a little bit different of a what's in the bag video, because we're gonna be showing you all of the video equipment and gear that we travel with to create the videos that you see on RDC Film YouTube channel, and also for Adventures in Golf on the Scratch YouTube channel. Title card, bags. So these are the two camera backpacks that we use when we travel. Um, this is the Peak Design Travel Bag 45 liter, and this is the Cinebag CB25 Revolution backpack. We also bring along North Face duffel bag, 95 liters of stuff you can fit in this, our extra drone that's in the drone bag, our toolkit, stuff like that. Um, all gets thrown into this just to keep it nice and organized when you throw it on a plane. It's been around the world, as you can tell, has some scars, a couple holes here and there, but still going strong. And finally, a golf bag. And you might be thinking to yourself, of course, Simon, of course you bring a golf bag, it's a golf show. But we actually use this to carry around equipment. So light stands, tripods, um, a scrim gym, anything long that will fits in here nicely is what we use this for. And we'll dive into all of this stuff a little bit later. Camera. So next I'm gonna walk you guys through which cameras we use and also how I like to build my personal camera up, what I've found the best handheld rig that I can make from shooting adventures in golf to a braking series. The base of the whole build obviously starts with the camera. Um, and for us, our A camera is the Sony FX3. It does everything we need. And one of the things we need the most is a compact package. So it achieves that really well, very small form factor. It gives you an incredible image. Top of that FX3, we have the small rig half cage. I really enjoy using the half cage. It's a little bit lighter weight and a little bit easier to access all the buttons than you'll find on a full cage. Um, but you still get all of the mount points and accessories and even built-in little tools via magnets, which is a lifesaver. So the first thing that you have to add to every camera to make it functional is the lens. So 90% of the time, we're gonna be using the Sony G Masters 2470. It's f2.8, so you let in a lot of light, but you also get you know, that versatility of 24 to 70 mil. We used to shoot on primes a lot, which has a very beautiful look to it, obviously. Um, but this is just, it just kind of fits our needs better for most of the running gun stuff that we do. Next thing that is crucial to a good handheld rig, to me at least, is a, a top handle. This one is pretty new to me actually. I upgraded from a full metal one. This one has a little bit of wood on, on the back. It's a little bit more ergonomic and I found it really helpful. And you also get another built-in tool. So shout out to Small Rig, because those are always great to have, especially when you're putting on your monitor. This is a small HD Focus 5 inch. It's a super awesome monitor to work with. The interface is really nice. They're very lightweight, easy to pack, nice and small, touch screen, all the features that you would want in a monitor. So we just throw that on the front. Here, and then we can use our handy dandy Allen key to tighten it on there to make sure it's not gonna go anywhere. And then on the monitor, I also have the small rig cage. It just offers that little bit more protection if accidents do happen, but it also allows you to throw on this nice big sun hood. When you're, you know, when you're out in the, in the countryside of Oaxaca, Mexico, filming with, with Jamie about his golf course that he's creating, it can get pretty sunny. So we like to have the sun hoods on here to just create as much shade as possible from every direction. This is the best one I've found. We've tried a couple of different variants. The small rig one definitely offers the most protection cage wise, but also sun wise. And so you can make sure you're in focus and getting, you know, your shot is composed correctly and all of that. So moving on to the next piece of my build is the Rode VideoMic NTG. We actually have three of these because we have three cameras. We're using two right now. This is the best run and gun mic I've found for these smaller cameras um, that don't have an XLR input. That just slides on the side here, wrap the cable around and into the mic jack. So moving on to power, one side is labeled alive, 
and one side is labeled dead. While we're on the road, it's really easy for everybody to tell which side has good batteries and which side has bad batteries. One thing that I really enjoy about having the A camera, and this is fairly new to us, is the Anton Bauer Titan Base system. Um, so this is like a, a V-mount style battery, just a, a large battery pack um, that you can, has a plate on it that you can remove, that this goes on the bottom of your camera, and then the battery just slides in on the bottom there. And this, th this thing lasts probably like five hours of continuous shooting. This can get me through a whole braking series, which takes obviously a little bit longer than a normal round of golf. So you just screw the plate in on the bottom, just like that, just like you would a tripod plate, and then the battery just slides on. So not only does attaching this Anton Bauer to the bottom add five hours of runtime versus, you know, like one hour that you might get out of just the Sony battery. With this, what you're actually doing is just constantly charging the camera. And so after five hours of shooting and this dies and I take it off, I still have a full battery in the camera. It's, it's just an extra backup, you know, for those super long days. So to finish off, let's talk about the front of the lens. We really like these Polar Pro Defender lens caps. They not only fit multiple lens sizes, but they're just a little bit extra protection. Um, it really sucks if any piece of gear breaks um, while you're out on the road, but especially something as important as your lens. You never want that to happen. So the first thing I throw on the front of the lens is our matte box. Um, the matte box is an awesome tool. Not only do you look like an absolute pro, but it also cuts out the flare that you get from the sun. It would just create a cleaner image because you don't want flare all the time. Once you have your matte box on, that's when you throw on your ND filters. We like using the Polar Pro Peter McKinnon edition variable NDs, um, specifically the two to five stop ones. They just, they have a really nice color rendition and they have hard stops. So you're never gonna get that, that Xing that you get on some of the uh, cheaper ND filters. That's pretty much it for the camera build. There's only one more thing we need, and that is SD cards. The world of SD cards is quite vast and complicated. The most important part of these cards is that it's UHS-2 and a V90 card. And that just means that we can record at our, our high-end frame rates and still the color profiles that we like to use. I also like using the 128 gigabyte cards because if, God forbid, you do have a corrupt card, if you're switching them more often because they're smaller capacity, then you're gonna lose less. So that's it for the build of my camera, the FX3. We have a B and C camera that are our Sony A7S III's. Um, they are identical as far as the image that comes out of it. Um, it's just some of the exterior features and just a few settings that you can change on the inside that make this camera just a little bit more video friendly. But other than that, they create the same image and they're also built up pretty similarly with the same microphones, monitors, and all of the accessories. So now that I've showed y'all everything that goes into our camera build, um, here are some of the accessories we carry around. A 70 to 200, 50 mil, and 35 mil of the SLR Magic Micro Prime Cines. So if we're shooting late at night, um, we'll throw these on just to get that little bit extra light. We'll throw a Promus filter on the G Masters. Along with filters, we also have a lot of backups. In here, we have polarizing filters, we have solid NDs if it's like super bright out, UV protecting filters if it's gonna be super dusty and I don't want the lens to get dirty. It's thrown in the secondary case that we keep with us just in case. So one of the most important things that we keep with us is this little accessory bag. It has all of our, you can hear them, can you hear them? All of the extra screws. Um, there's a lot of screws that keep on camera cages, tripod plates, um, everything has a screw. And for some reason, screws go missing. I don't know what happens to them, they just disappear. So we have a lot of extras. We have extra tripod plates. We also have mounts that our monitors can go on if, um, if we're, you know, for the Ronin. I mean, that's pretty much it. Moving on to a lot of people's favorite part is the drone. The Mavic 2 Pro is our drone of choice. For the past four years, I wanna say, ever since this came out, um, we've been using this and it's incredible. Every beautiful aerial shot, either photo on the Instagram or video um, on the YouTube channel, 
is, is from this small little guy. And it's so impressive how, how far drone technology has come that we can just throw this in the backpack and be all set and get such an incredible image. To fly the drone, you need two things. One, a controller, and two, batteries. The controller we have is the smart controller from DJI. It's just leaps and bounds better than the controller that comes with the drone. Um, it has the built-in screen, which is brighter than your phone screen. You don't have to worry about your phone dying. It's just all built into one thing. Just don't forget to charge it. And then batteries, we have a lot of batteries. We have that one, and we have these, and three more. And we have nine drone batteries that we take with us everywhere we go. Um, if we're you know, doing flyovers or every hole during a braking series, and then it's sunset and you're getting beauty drone, and then in the middle of the day, you're getting a drone photo of the crew. Um, it's just, you can never have too much flight time in the pocket. And the last piece to the drone puzzle is the ND filters. Throwing an ND filter on the drone is super important just so you can keep your shutter speed low and keep that nice motion blur in all of your drone images. But that's pretty much all of the accessories that rounds out everything that we keep in our camera bags. So next, let's dive into our audio kit. Audio is obviously super important. Audio is sometimes said to be 60% of video. A lot of our audio just comes from the on-camera mics. Those Rode VideoMic NTGs do a really good job of capturing the audio, um, especially when we have the dead cats on here. This is the Rode WS11 dead cat that we throw on, specifically designed for that mic. When we're shooting AIG, we like to loft people up as much as possible. And when we do that, we use the Sennheiser AVX system. These are a fairly modern take on a, on a lavalier mic. I, I like them a lot because they're so compact. This is, this is our receiver. It's super small. And so when you throw that on your Zoom H6, for example, you know, there's no, there's no wires hanging off. There's no free floating items. It just sticks right in and they pair super easily. You just hold down the power button and they find each other and you're all set to go. So when we record externally, we record to the Zoom H6. We really like using this. You have four in channels. A lot of times we have multiple people lobbed up or we're running a booth mic and a couple of lobs. So it's really nice to have those four separate channels um, for both editing and posts and just making sure you get all the levels right. Moving on to our boom mic. It comes in this nice hard shell case. It is the DD S Mic 2. Incredible. It's really, it's pretty compact for a boom mic. Um, it's very well made, has a great sound. We also carry a backup, um, Audio-Technica. This one's pretty old. Um, this is just in case anything goes wrong with our DD. Title card. That is open. So all of the grip equipment that we bring lives in the golf bag and the yellow North Face duffel bag that we bring. Um, and that includes three lightweight tripods, and one heavy duty fluid head tripod um, for moving shots, three light stands, one for our boom pole, one for our light, and one to hold our scrim gym during interviews, a boom pole, two grip heads, a boom holder, and a Mussolini clamp to hold the boom and our scrim gym. And of course we bring our scrim gym, which is a four by six Westcott scrim gym, a toolkit that has Everything we might need from a tape measure, screwdrivers, lens cleaning fluid, super glue, Allen keys, another rocket blower, lens wipes, everything we might need to work on the cameras. A circular reflector, gaff tape of a few different varieties, elastic ties, bongo ties, and different size clamps. And to finish off those two bags, we have our backup drone, which is another Mavic 2 Pro some backup lav mics, and our Ronin RS2. This thing is amazing. I can put my full camera rig, even with the map box on it. That's how we get all those buttery smooth AIG intros and a lot of other B-roll that you see in the videos. And for lighting, we use the Aperture 300X, um, and we also bring the Light Dome Mini when we do that, just to help soften it a little bit. So that wraps up everything that we take on the road when we go to shoot anything from Adventures in Golf to match play with Brian Baumgartner or breaking Aaron Hills. These two things on the table are some of the most important things that I always make sure I have when I go to shoot. One is my black bucket hat and two is my Leatherman. The black bucket hat is super important to just, you know, keep the sun off your neck, off your face, 
um, and it's, it has to be black since we're the camera crew. We gotta be incognito. My Leatherman is super important. You never know when you will need a knife or a screwdriver or some pliers. Um, it's just super important to me that I be prepared and ready to go for whatever we come across. I hope it was helpful for you guys to see what equipment we use to create the videos here at RGC. Um, if you have any questions, I'll be in the comments below answering for the next hour or so. And uh, thanks for watching.